Hey, this is Jamie back with Compressor Source. Today we're doing another informational video about compressors, what parts make up a compressor, and a better understanding of how they operate. So next time when you're needing parts, you know exactly what to look for. Behind me, we have a generic single stage compressor. This particular one is made by Puma. They make a very good compressor. For the most part, I would say a good 85% of compressors, especially ones that you're gonna find in your you know, big box stores, your hardware stores, that type of thing, are gonna operate a lot like this compressor and have the same or similar parts to what this compressor has. We're gonna start up here. So this has a single stage pump. A single stage pump can have one piston, it can have two pistons, it can have three pistons, really whatever. What a single stage pump does is that means that all pistons in this compressor are bringing in air and pumping out air. So the whole pump is being used to compress um, the air uh, through a single stage, basically. It comes in and out. A two stage pump could look very similar, similar to this, but instead of all three pistons having a filter, one of them would have a basically not, no filter at all, which would be pumping directly into the tank. In that case, you basically have these two pistons that would pump into the third cylinder to get that higher pressure before it goes into the tank. Because a two-stage pump pumps up to 175 PSI usually, a single-stage compressor is gonna be in between 95 uh, or sorry, 95 and 125 to like 95 and 135 PSI, um, just depending on the manufacturer and that type of thing. So now that we've gone over the actual difference in between a single stage and a two stage pump, let's go over basically the different components that basically help that pump work. So you're going, on every compressor, you're gonna have a main line that's off the compressor pump that pumps into the tank. One of the most important features of a compressor and one of the most important pieces that a lot of people have issues with and they don't know how to tell whether they're good or bad is the check valve. The check valve is located typically on most compressors directly in the tank. So this check valve right here, which I got one here just to show you, looks just like this. This is actually screws into the tank. Another style is something that looks like this. They're both a check valve, just different styles. But this is what holds the air in the tank once the compressor reaches its peak pressure. So it keeps the pressure from coming back to the head of the pump. So if, if that valve is bad, you're going to continually get air leaking back to the pump, which then in return leaks out of the pressure switch. So a lot of people say, my pressure switch is leaking, what do I do? So the pressure switch, if it's leaking when the pump shuts off, that means that you have a bad check valve. If it is leaking while the compressor is pumping, that means that you, you could have a bad pressure switch. You could also still have a problem with your check valve, depending on if it actually stops when it shuts off. If it stops leaking when the compressor shuts off, more than likely you do not have a bad check valve. Now, that being said, some industrial compressors have internal, like a hydraulic unloader system, or internal unloader on the pump and they don't use the pressure switch at all. So in that case, this little copper line that comes off this check valve that typically leads to the pressure switch that has the unloader on the side would lead to the front of the pump. So when the compressor gets up to pressure, the actual hydraulic unloader inside the compressor is unloading the pump and you'll leak back air. It operates the same way. So if air would be leaking from that part of your pump, then when the, when the compressor is off, then you would have a bad check valve. The air should never be leaking out of any unloader port when the compressor shuts off if the check valve is good. Sometimes people buy compressors used, get them home, and find out that someone altered them and they don't even have a check valve. The bad part about not having a check valve is that if the compressor cannot unload and get the pressure off the head of the pump, when it goes to start up, it starts under load, which then in return is hard on your electric motor. So that being said, moving on to the next component would be the pressure switch. So this pressure switch does two things on most units. It basically, it has the incoming power from the wall, the outgoing power to the motor, and it operates the on and off with contacts inside the switch of when your compressor kicks on and off and it also has an unloader built on the side. 
The unloader on this side has a little needle valve, which is what is unloads the pressure as we were talking about. There's also a diaphragm on the bottom of this pressure switch, which this, this black box is called the pressure switch. A lot of people sometimes refer, refer to it as a regulator or breaker. Um, it, a lot of people just don't know what to call it, but it is called a pressure switch. This has a diaphragm in the bottom. That diaphragm can also become old, brittle, and leak. So if you're ever getting leaky air all the time, whether it's running or not running out of the bottom of your pressure switch, it's more than likely that diaphragm, which then your whole pressure switch would need to be replaced. There is very few companies that make parts for pressure switches because of the fact when you take them apart, you have a whole bunch of little pieces and springs that are compressed that just fly everywhere. Getting it back together and actually working properly is very complicated and is not worth it. And when you compare the price to the, of the pressure switch to the price of the parts. Um, this particular pressure switch has a four port manifold. Some of them just have a single port manifold, which a single port is just one port going directly to the tank. That's the port that sets, senses the pressure of the pressure uh, in the tank. On a four port manifold, a lot of people are like, well, what port has to go to where? They're actually all the same. So if there's a four port manifold on the bottom of the switch, you can configure that in any way, shape or form. They're all leading to the same orifice. So what the four port manifold often does is gives you an extra port for a gauge or a relief valve, things like that, or basically a coupler to connect your hose to for people that have tanks that don't have extra ports on them to do so. so if you have a single port switch now and you're replacing the pressure switch, you can add a four port switch to it if you want an extra outlet, things like that. It ain't going to hurt anything. Um, the, the actual operation of the switch is the same. Moving on, on all compressors you will have a gauge. The pressure gauge is what tells you what pressure is inside the tank. If it's directly off the tank. So in this case it is. Some compressors will all ha also have a regulator outlet with a second gauge which is showing you regulated pressure. Um, you want to make sure that you always have a gauge that is measuring the actual tank pressure. The regulated pressure is just a, a, a basically an option that you can add to the compressor if you have a regulator. You would also have a relief valve, which is one of the most Im key important parts of, of a compressor because it's your safety relief valve. This protects, if anything would go wrong, it would keep the tank from exploding, uh, any of the lines from exploding, that type of thing. So a relief valve looks something like this. On this compre compressor, it's hard to see. It's actually on the top of the tank, um, but on most compressors, it's going to be located somewhere on the tank. It is very important, especially if you're redoing a compressor or buy a used compressor to make sure that it has a relief valve like this. That is what's going to keep you safe if something goes wrong. On some compressors, you will have multiple relief valves. And the reason why there's a few manufacturers, this dates back a long time ago, but there was an issue with one of these main lines exploding. Um, a, compre or a customer installed a check valve backwards, which pressurized the line and made it explode. This would be very, very rare, really hard to happen, but they put a relief valve in the side of the check valve on a secondary port. They're typically special check valves for these brands, but you'll have a relief valve on this main line to prevent that from happening. That is not on every brand, but you will always have one directly off the tank on every single compressor you see. You will also, uh, have an outlet port on any compressor. On bigger compressors like this, you're typically just going to see a ball valve. Um, some compressors, smaller compressors, you're going to see manifolds that have multiple gauges, multiple outlets uh, for hose connections, that type of thing. It really just depends on the manufacturer. Some of those manifolds have built-in regulators. A lot of people are like, hey, can I get replacement parts? If your compressor has a regulator that's built into an aluminum cast manifold, more than likely you have to go directly to that manufacturer or that brand to get parts. They are not universal parts, they are specific for that compressor. You will also have a tank drain on compressors all the way at the bottom of the tank. Most of them are going to have like a little T-style drain or, or an O-ring sealed little thumb twist drain. Uh, that's gonna see, you're going to see that on like 90% of your compressors. This particular compressor has a ball valve drain. So this basically comes out front to make it easier for you to drain. You're not having to get under the tank 
It really depends on the brand. You can also add different aftermarket drains. They have pull drains, they have automatic drains, that, you know, they have manual drains, really anything. And if that's something you're interested, you're tired of getting under your tank, twisting that, that valve open, you can call us and we can definitely help point you in the right direction to see what option is best for you. A couple last things I wanna go over. Um, when it comes to electric motors, um, there's gonna be a wide range. When in the compressor industry, if it's a belt driven compressor that has a pulley and belts that's operating it and it's not direct driven, you're gonna have a few standard frames of motors, especially if it's a compressor that's made in the last 15 or 20 years, you're going to have you know, either a 56 frame motor, a 184 T frame motor, a 215 T frame motor. Um, that frame size designates, designates the actual so physical size and mounting uh, dimensions of the motor. It also will designate the shaft size unless there's any extra numbers or letters after that frame size. That is really important when it comes to replacing your motor, making sure you get the right size motor. You will also, on these smaller motors, what a lot of people don't realize is you have a 115 volt operation and 220 volt operation. On a lot of motors, it'll say 15 amps at 110 or 15 amps at 220. On some of the 15 amp at 220 motors, it's seven and a half amps at 110. A lot of people will see that 15 amps at 220 go buy a 15 amp 110 volt motor thinking that they're gonna run their compressor on 110 volts because they don't have 220. That will never happen. If you have a 15 amp 220 volt motor, you have to have a 15 amp 220 volt motor. If you have a 15 amp 110 volt motor, you can go to a 15 amp 220 volt motor. You can't just go, you can't go down in voltage without doubling the amperage basically. So that's really important. It's a common misconception. A lot of people buy motors end up not being able to use them. Um, and when it comes to compressor pumps, you, you typically can't downsize in the motor um, without having issues because it, it, it was originally designed to operate uh, with that horsepower of motor. So one of the last things I wanna go over, if you're building a compressor or putting together a compressor, the flywheel has fins on it. Those fins are designed to blow air over the pump for cooling. So when it comes to the rotation of the motor, some motors are multi, can rotate in either direction. It's really important to make sure those, those fins, like a fan, are blowing to where they blow air over the pump. And that'll keep your pump cool. It will still pump if it's going in reverse, but it's not gonna cool. So your, the life expectancy out of that pump, especially if you use it hard, is gonna be very short because it's not able to cool. You will also have air filters on most any pump. These ones are a standard uh, canister, which have a round filter element. Some pumps have, you know, like a filter pad right in the head of the compressor. Really depends on the brand, um, but you're going to have the filters. You will also, on this pump, you'll see a sight glass. Some compressors don't have sight glasses. Some of them have a dipstick that stick in the compressor. Um, Either way it is common, there's no, no right or wrong. A lot of, it's easier to see the sight glass, so a lot of people like the sight glass, but over time, if you don't change oil often, they will get dirty, so there is a downfall of to that too. It'll be hard to see at that point. You will always have a breather on your crankcase though. So whether that is on the dipstick or on this particular pump that's on the back, it'll be a little basically plastic or rubber uh, cap that's in the case of the, the pump that has either a foam filter in there or a marble basically so that crankcase can breathe. It is very dangerous to, if that is leaking oil for any reason um, to plug that because if you plug it, you will build pressure in the crankcase which can lead to um, your pump exploding, bad things. Just You wanna make sure that your pump always has a breather. So don't alter anything like that from the, that was made originally from the factory. Um, a lot of people over time, the breathers will break off that type of thing and they don't know what to do. Just make sure you don't plug it. So I think that pretty much covers, you know, everything about a compressor uh, for the most part, at least your key parts and components. I hope this video, you know, better helps you understand those parts and how they function. Uh, if you have any questions at all, remember you can always give us a call or email us. Uh, our website is compressorsource.com. That's www.compressor-source.com or give us a call at 
396-8676. Thank you for watching this video and we'll see you next time.